Solving the Wet Palette. Spiking Bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and I have something really cool to show you today. So Kit from Game Envy hit me up. He's like, hey, I'm going to do a new Kickstarter for a web palette. And I'm like, eh, another web palette, huh? <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 it's different. It's different. I'm like, okay, all right. All right, let me know. Let me know. Keep going. And he basically explained it all, uh, explained that he already has the, the molds done for the 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 whole system and that he's going to be able to actually fulfill it by uh, Christmas time ish, you know, fingers crossed there's crazy stuff going on out there uh, in general. But uh, yeah, supposedly this thing is going to be delivered this year, 2021, kind of crazy to even think about the, the possibility of that even happening. But uh, even more, he had product made. I love it when they have product made and they could send it to me and I can mess with it. I can show you guys, I can put it through its paces. And with a wet palette, you know, everybody promises a new wet palette, a new groundbreaking wet palette. This thing's gonna be dope. It's gonna it's gonna change your, your painting life and all that things. And everybody says it. And to be honest, I mean, there's been a cool few innovations here and there. Army Painter did some cool stuff. Redgrass, eh, you know, it's redgrass. Like, there really isn't anything innovating about it, to be fair, but it's it's a nice little package and you know, it's something to buy and it's cool. Uh, but then there's cheaper ones you can buy at the art store. And of course, yes, I know, please don't comment. It's, yes, I can make this for six bucks. Everybody can make a wet palette for six bucks. It'll turn out messy. It's a lot of work. I don't have time for it personally. And you know, a lot of people are busy out there and they might not have time for it personally. So the reason I'm talking to you about this today is because this may actually be the most innovative wet palette product produced to date for the miniature you know painting hobby not just wargaming in general so i think it's going to do really well uh the fact that people can get it as christmas presents there's going to be deals for buying multiples of them actually and the, i don't know if i'm allowed to say what the price point is but the price point is very affordable if you could afford the ones that are at stores right now from the army painter well you can definitely afford this one and more than likely you can afford more than one because there will be a bundle deal at the kickstart I don't have the Kickstarter to show you. I have a preview page. I'll put the link in there, but by the time this goes out, it should already be, you know, possibly close to start, or at least you can sign up for the email and find out when it goes live, because I'm telling you what, this may be a hobby game changer. So we're gonna have to do this in a little bit of reverse order real quick. So I'm not gonna show you all the product features, but I am gonna open this up because I've been trying out some paint here for a few days, and that's what I wanted to show you first. So. Here's basically the whole setup with, I would say, maximum saturation on this. Now, there's no um, mold retardant or anything on this. So what you're going to want to do is if you want a little less moisture in here and also you want to keep uh, you know, mold growth down to a minimum, you can open the airtight seal right here and that will allow more air to get in here and kind of flow freely and you won't have as much growth and accumulation and also to keep your saturation levels probably a little bit more kind of lower and you don't have to put as much you know water into into the palette and things right here i thought this was a good amount but here's four days ago three days ago two days ago yesterday morning and this morning um just before breakfast about about four hours or so ago so you can see you know it's great for same day if you want to be at this saturation level you can really get in here and work and slap these paints down on different things straight from the palette but if you leave it out with this much water in it you know even the next day it's going to be a little bit more saturated in here which is great for you know doing desaturated painting or doing wet blending and things this is probably perfect but say you're just a traditional painter you're doing layer layer highlights and things like that you just want to come back to your colors the next day you probably want to keep this a little bit drier that's kind of what i'm finding here now something else that's really cool that I, that I noticed from this is once I put the paper in, and I'm gonna show you that here in a second, but here is basically something that I like to do. I like to take the end of my, um, my brush here, and sometimes I like to mix paint. And I haven't been able to do that, and I, I swear, I do it every time. Every time I get a wet palette, it doesn't matter whose it is, I do that, and it th thrashes the paper. And the cool thing about this is, it doesn't thrash this paper because Kit used a thicker paper, which we're gonna, which I'm gonna show you the um, advantages to here in a second that I noticed immediately as soon as I set this thing up. I was like, oh, this paper is nice. I gotta ask him about this because I really like this paper. 
So to set up the whole wet palette, each one of these is gonna come with a whole bunch of paper and you can see it's, it's definitely really thick paper and two sponges. So what's cool about the sponges is depending on where you live and your humidity level, you're going to be able to kind of figure out, this is the one I just cleaned out. You're gonna be able to figure out like, oh, hey, I live in a really dry area. Let me put two sponges in here because I need to keep it super moist. Or hey, I live in North Carolina. It's a freaking rainforest here lately. So I'm just maybe only gonna use one of these and not keep it as wet as I just had it because it's a little bit of a learning curve and I think uh, for the past couple days I had it a little bit too moist. So what I'm gonna do is pour some water in here. Now there, there really isn't anything groundbreaking about this sponge or anything like that because this is pretty much what we've seen before. It's kind of industry standard, I guess, at this point. Um, just wanna put enough in here that it, that it gets enough moisture all over it and this excess that you can see i'm just going to pour it in my paint water here that's in a cup designed to not get accidentally drank and there we've got it now i probably should keep this a little bit a little bit drier just because we noticed that now here's something that you're going to appreciate i think and it was the very first thing i noticed when putting the paper in here is when you put the paper in let's see if i have to eat my words nope I don't yeah so what's cool about this is this paper is so thick that you can use the back end of your brush to stir the the paint like I showed you but in a lot of cases and there isn't enough water in here in a lot of cases you don't have to you just kind of have to smooth it out but it's not gonna curl which is kind of crazy because um, a lot of times you put the paper in and then you have to flip it over immediately because it's going to curl so give me a second let me, let me get this straight so this thing really seals tight to uh, the sponge here. So all you kind of have to do is just kind of work it a little bit with your, your thumb here, just kind of pulling all the air out to the sides and you get like a nice smooth surface. And not that it really wasn't a nice smooth surface before, I just didn't like all the, you could kind of see all the, the gaps and the bubbles in there, but that was kind of where it's at. So once you get it set up to your liking, of course, you know, everybody's gonna be a little bit different. That's what's cool about this project is that it's a pretty customizable. Um, there's still a lot of features that I think are very innovative and also something that we haven't seen before. First one being uh, this, which you might notice right off the bat. There's a gasket in here or a seal. So what this actually does is, according to them, this makes it both watertight and airtight as well. Something that I don't think we've seen in a wet palette to date. Now, does that mean... You know, you could slide it sideways and things like that and it won't mess up your paint inside. It's probably gonna mess up your paint inside. But the, the good news is that, you know, it's not gonna leak all over things on accident just in case, you know, something happens like that. And like I said, it's got this uh, seal right here. So you can open it up, you can let air in. So hopefully, it, you know, kind of doesn't let mold grow as much or it keeps it at it like a kind of constant, you know, it's not too moist, it's not too dry or anything like that because, you know, it's your ambient kind of humidity level around, you should be good to go. But obviously try this in your area and things like that. There's also this little neat feature here that I think is pretty cool. So you can open this up, you can keep your brushes in here. And by the way, these uh, will be part of the Kickstarter too, his Phalanx brushes. Now he has some uh, natural brushes too. Um, I think they're, I forget what they're called. I had a set right here that I've been using for a while. They're called like Spear and there's a couple different names. Uh, edge and spear and different things those are great those are natural bristles uh these are synthetic because that's kind of the sign of the times um you know synthetic's a little bit cheaper it's hard to get that the uh kalinsky sable brushes so this is gonna be um you know some people like natural some people like synthetic the good thing about synthetic is uh they're good for pretty much all types of paint not that that matters to us um the the price point's obviously lower they should last a bit longer. They're, you have to definitely clean and condition these after every use, uh, for sure. They're not, the ends aren't gonna split or do anything like that, but you may have to apply more coats of paint is basically what it comes down to. But you're always gonna have a nice, uh, good point on the end. And for the most part, they're pretty easy to work with. They're just not gonna hold as much paint um, kids drawing them up into all those all those little threads or whatever they call them. Um, it's just not not going to work that way. So these are great. They're affordable. I've been using these for a while. I've been using the natural hairs. I find myself gravitating towards these for actual highlights and layering um, to the other ones, the natural ones for like washes and things like that. I just think they work better because they hold more, obviously more paint. And you know, you can pop this thing out here 
and then you can put your different brushes on here, do your different mixes and whatever you might have you in here and then of course wash it out. And probably one of the coolest features I think is you can pull this off and I'm, I don't have enough room to show you, but you can put your cell phone on it so you can be watching your videos and things right here uh, going along you know, have this next to your station and just kind of be watching videos. You can put some sheet music on here. You can put some painting recipes and things. I like to print out painting recipes. I'm old school. Sometimes I have them out right here and this would be great for that nice little uh, place to kind of stand it up next to your working area. So now let's give it the, uh, the watertight test here. So I've got everything locked down and uh, hopefully this doesn't leak any water. So if it does, it should come out right here. It is definitely not leaking any water. So I imagine if it's watertight, it's probably airtight as well, just like they indicated. Apparently his manufacturer does uh, containers. It's That's kind of their thing. So he just gave them the specs and uh, this is what they came up with. And it looks like it sure as heck is waterproof and probably most likely airproof. I don't have a way to test that. And I suppose we should take a look out inside this just to make sure. And yep, it's sure, oh well, yep. Yeah all the water kind of collected down at the bottom. So there was some extra water in there. I didn't even know it was in there. So we're gonna drain that out ourselves right there, just because I wanna keep this a little bit drier, I think, um, than what I had it been using it the past couple of days. Now I got some Marvel Crisis Protocol figures to work on. Also something else to keep in mind, the water tends to get up on the bottom of this. So when you place this down on something else, you're gonna to wanna to wipe it off before and definitely probably after, just so you don't get crud that's on this into your your um, the wet palette right here and then you know start messing uh, things up. Now, I did wanna compare this loosely to some of the other um, wet palettes out there just to give you an idea of exactly how big this is. This particular one right here, I think, is six and a half by eight point or 9.85. So basically 10 inches long by about seven-ish or six, six and a half inches, give or take. Uh, how does that compare to a couple other things? Well, the Army Painter I actually have here, so that's an easy comparison. So here's the Army Painter one. This one sells for about uh, 30 bucks, 27, 28 dollars in uh, stores. The advantage, obviously, the Army Painter is you can pretty much get it any anywhere off the shelf. With this one, you know, I'm sure it will go into stores, but uh, Kit also has this Game MV store, so you should be able to pick this up regardless, even if you uh, miss out or want it down the road or want a second one or a third one. But being able to actually have this in hand by, in 2021 is actually pretty clutch. Uh, it compares to the red grass ones. I think the red grass ones here, I took some notes, is nine and a half by 6.5. So roughly the same. So the larger XL one's about two inches on each side more. Um, that kind of makes sense. And then their normal one is nine and a half, which is actually shorter, I think. Nine and a half. Yeah, it would be shorter lengthwise, but um, so about 6.5. Yep, it's about the same this way. So it's about a half an inch shorter this way and about the same uh, length that way. And I think those ones go for about 40, $45, I wanna say, conversion. They don't have it listed for US dollars on their site. Where this, like I said, if you can afford the Army Painter one, you will be able to afford this for sure. Um, definitely getting two of them will be pretty sweeter of a deal for sure. They will have a two pack available, he, he, uh, he mentioned to me. They'll also have sets of their Phalanx brushes up on the Kickstarter as part of that as well. I like these brushes a lot. I've been using them um, for my Marvel Crisis Protocol. I really like the synthetics um, for layering and things like that. But for a lot of the washes and uh, kind of some of the contrast paints I've been doing with the Marvel Crisis Protocol figures, I've been using some of the natural hair brushes um, just because they hold a lot more uh, for the washes and the glazes. But, uh, but yeah, that's it. I think, like I said, I don't like showing the same products over and over and like, hey, oh, here's another wet palette, guys. But I think this one is a game changer. I'm not really sure at this point what anybody could actually do to produce something besides have some mold retardant in it. But the problem is, and coming from a um, marine uh, engineering background, that you know, denying growth of things on surfaces generally is carcinogenic for humans. So. Eh, might not be something we see in the future um, in this hobby because you know getting it on your hands, getting it in and around your mouth, never a good thing for those substances, of course. So I think you know just with a little bit of um, diligence, you know, keeping this open, and I'm gonna play around with it some more. And maybe we can post up about it, maybe on one year later or something like that, um, in some live streams and things. 
about this and you know about how it's working using uh, the seal a little bit more because as you saw it stayed very wet inside but maybe a little too wet and I think having the seal here will definitely solve a lot of those problems and you don't even have to pull it up all the way it just it just stays open right there and you know so we'll play around with that here in the studio uh, going into the coming weeks and months so that is it for this one uh, check out the link in the description and the comments so you can sign up to know when this Kickstarter goes live it should be sometime in September so it's all very exciting I wish Kit the best because I think this is a very, very uh, good, well-engineered and designed product and definitely a hobby uh, game breaker in my book.